Okay, guys, we're back with Revelations 3. You know, there's somebody out there that was mad about me adding S to the end of it. But it's, it's really not just one revelation. It's many revelations. So we're covering the chapters that discuss the churches. And there's a lot of, we already just, Revelations 2 exploded with information. So we want to keep the flow going and we're going to just let the Spirit lead us on this as to where it goes. Now, again, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a theologian. I'm, I have no formal training. I'm a guy with a connective tissue disease that lays him out sometimes. So I'm laying here doing videos. I mean, what else am I going to do? So I'm just covering what it says. The Bible says... The, the book of Revelation says, you know, blessed is he who reads this aloud and blessed are those who hear it. So let's read through it and see what jumps out at us and see where this leads us. This is just just a Bible study, just a basic, simple face value interpretation. No more, no less. I'm not looking to come against anybody or disagree with anybody. I'm just sharing what I see. It's like it's about to rain uh, and share what's being shown to me and it may actually because watching this may actually cause something else to jump out at you and give you a new revelation about this which is good that's what we want all right so revelation 3 the dead church and to the angel of the church in sardis write these things says he who has the seven spirits of god and the seven stars i know your works that you have a name that you are alive but you are dead be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Now, when we go back and we look, about, look at the rapture of the church, no man knows the day or the hour, but then we see stuff like this where he says, if you don't watch, you're not going to know the hour, indicating, like in Revelation 2, indicating there's several statements that indicate that we may know the hour. Now we're watching, and we're studying, and we're looking, and we're seeing. But this is one of those things that tells me that at some point we will know when it's going to happen. It may be right before, I don't know. But we will know when it's going to happen. But until that time... It's vitally important that you put away those things that are evil, put them away from you, and come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Put your full faith and trust in him, and walk as rightly as you can. These don't save you. You already have salvation. But why would you do the things that you know he doesn't approve of? If you love him, obey him. Simple. So, remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. Don't fall asleep. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So the person who is, is the overcomer. Who is the overcomer? The one who has faith in Christ. When you fully achieve faith in Christ, you walk in the Spirit, the things that are of this life don't affect you like they used to do. And this is a lifelong process that comes to this. Some people do it quicker, some take longer. Uh, I've talked to people that 60 years they walk with the Lord and just now have truly come to an understanding of how they should be walking. I've been with the Lord over 20 years. And just now, in the last eight months, have really come to a better understanding of all this and how, how these things unfold and how I should be walking. And I walk in that. So that's what he's telling everybody here. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot his name from the book of life. But when you read these letters, when he's talking to them, it's like there's a group of people that aren't quite there and a bunch of them that are there. And like I told you guys before, every church, about only about 10% of the congregation is on track. The rest of them have things that are getting in their way of their relationship with the Lord. So here he goes again. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So whenever you see that statement, that's important. It's time to, you have to really pay attention close. 
And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. So when we read these different things he's talking about with the churches, we see the same thing happening in churches here today in this world, especially in America. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, this was a pretty bad problem then and it is now, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. So does this apply to Jews only? No. Of course, there are Jews who are claiming certain things and it's not the truth. But this is applying to everybody who says, well, th th this could be any Gentile that says, well, now, you know, now that I'm chosen, uh, we're I, me and people like me are above the Jew. We're replacing the Jew. Wrong. That's wrong. Do, do not blaspheme against that because that is God's chosen people and they always will be. And it is throughout the Bible. This lack of understanding comes from not reading scripture, comes from listening to somebody else. We are not chosen above the Jew. We are chosen with the Jew. We do not replace them. People have to get that understanding. You cannot, just because you have faith, just say, well, I'm, I'm the Jew now. And, and the Jews aren't. No, that's not how that works. So we have to read scripture in context and listen to what he says. Clearly, right here, he says in, in verse 9, Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to persevere. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's literally the last hour of the tribulation. No, that's not. That's the entire tribulation. Do a, 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 do a, a Bible study on the meaning of hour throughout the Bible, the meaning of day throughout the Bible. Look at all the different references that there are. It'll help you understand more what he's talking about. That whole seven years is going to be trial. But he says in verse 10, because you have kept my command to persevere, we're hanging in there, staying strong, staying faithful, not turning back. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. Wherever you are, stand firm. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Remember who the overcomer is? And he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He's playing... If anybody knows how to turn those kind of notifications off, let me know. Because those pop up constantly. So he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. That's Jesus Christ. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, it's Christians who, yeah, we go to church, yeah, we do this, yeah, we have a luncheon, that's about it. They're not on fire for Christ. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. He's telling them, pay attention, open your eyes, examine yourselves. You guys aren't walking in the right place. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him. 
and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So you see, there's a lot of important information. We're just in Revelation 3, and look at how many times that statement, he who has an ear, let him hear, has come up. It's, it's not just for the people at that time. Those churches did exist, but it's for the people now. The same frame of mind, the same frame of heart is, exi exists in our time. And this book is about the end times. So not only does it refer to them, it refers to us also. So we have to pay very close attention to what is going on in here. There's lots of little tiny details. And the stuff about, from all the way up to the beginning of Revelations 4, um, which we're about to get into some really good stuff now, what he's saying to these churches is he's saying, look, you guys need to pay attention. I see who you are. I see which one of you actually does have faith in me and believe in me. I see which one of you are struggling and you're going towards other things. Putting your faith in your works and your self-righteousness. Putting your faith in your supposed Junus. And none of that is true. And he's giving a warning. Turn back. Repent. Turn back from those things. Turn back to me and focus on me. I will deal with this. And you will have blessings. This is the overcomer. So, all these letters are talking to us individually and teaching us where we need to walk. Look, Self-examine. Look inward to see where you are. Love you guys. Bless you guys in Jesus' name. And I'll see you all in the next one.